What's up, everybody? What's going on this Sunday evening? Just uh, winding down from the weekend. And I wanted to do a video on the covert malignant narcissist. And I want to do this video on that specific kind of narcissist tonight because this is really um, how I got into this. You know, this is the the monster that really this is the monster that everybody's talking about but you know we kind of water it down when you talk about different aspects of narcissism but when we're talking about narcissists we're talking about the the indignant you know the boss that you dread going to work to because no matter what you do it wasn't right and even if it is right even if you know, the credit that, you know, the boss got credit for your work, you know, it's still, they still not happy with you. We talking about, you know, that parent that mistreated you, no matter what you did, they mistreated you, you know, uh, it's just, oh my gosh, the spouse that mm, endless, endless, that has no limits, <laughs> That's what we're talking about. We're talking about malignant. So malignant, the term malignant comes from it's a medical term that was used in the description of the level of a tumor. If you have a malignant tumor, that means that that tumor is cancerous. So that's the level of narcissism that we're talking about right now. You know, I want I, again, I started out. I wanted to say that. You know, this is the narcissist without limits. You know, this is the narcissist, you know, that is a user. You know, they'll use anybody and they use props. You know, they prop themselves up. They prop themselves up with their children. You know, um, because they're covert. They're covert and they are covert because they don't want you to see. They want to hide who they are from you for as long as possible. That mask, part of their mask is, you know, it may be, it's, it's their props. You know, the things they have propped up around them. So a lot of times you're going to see a narcissist, a malignant narcissist. That's most of the time. That's going to be somebody that's pretty attractive physically. Okay. But that's it. You know, they're not bringing really uh, they're not really bringing a whole lot else to the game. Now, they have some good things that they know how to say. And but everything about them is sexual. It's their body. They use their body. You know, it's a guy. He's going to be in the gym like every day. And, you know, the muscles and, you know, he knows that, hey, you know, we just like men. You know, we see a woman with a, you know, a incredible body. We're attracted to it. Well, men are the same way. You know, a woman see a man with the, the guns and the arms, the chest, you know, they, they pretty much irresistible as well. So, um, you know, these people, they're going to prop themselves up with that. They're going to use that as part of their mask because they want to invite you. They want to entice you. Actually, they want to entice you. So. But those aren't the only things they use. I want to go over a couple of different things that they use. You know, some of them, they, they use their children. They use their children and they use their children in a way where, you know, um, they use them for photo sessions. You know, that I'm this great loving parent and, you know, look at me and my kid. We having fun. Now, don't get me wrong, people. Please continue taking pictures with your children. That's a beautiful thing. But see, the difference with a narcissist is, see, behind closed doors, they, you know, it's a whole nother person with their children. You know, and don't get me wrong. We all get angry. We do things to our children. I know myself, you know, I love my children, you know, but I've done some things that I've been ashamed of, you know, behind closed doors as well. But it wasn't done with ill intent. It wasn't done with the intent of disturbing the child and harming the child permanently you know it was always i'm doing things in love i'm disciplining in love and i'm trying to help you grow um a narcissist you know behind closed doors they just 
just empty with their children. They just, you know, they're not going to help that child. And, you know, they're going to they torture the children. And they treat them. They, 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 the child's relationship with the narcissist is based on what the narcissist can gain from the child as far as supply. Just like anybody else in their life. The ch their child is just another form of supply for them. You know, they can get attention from looking good. Hey, you know what? Look at me and my look at me and my daughter. You know, I'm at the my, uh, birthday party at the school with my daughter, you know, and then you won't see them on there doing anything else with their kid till next year. You know, I mean, it's to me, that's sad. Um, they use their pets. Man, it's some people out here claiming to be dog lovers, cat lovers, horse lovers. I mean, any kind of pet. Fish lovers. Man. And you know, with pets, that's the easiest thing in the world to make love you. Because a pet naturally is going to love you if you feed it, give it something to drink, and you give it a shelter. A pet appreciates that. And they show you love every day when you get home from work. Every day. You know, but they want you to play with it and this and that, play frisbee with the dogs and stuff like that. Narcissists, hmm, nah, they, they they might do it once here and there just for the photo shot session. That's it. You know, they are not really animal lovers. It's just a prop. It's just something for... To, to collect bodies, you know, they it's like when they see this thing, this, when social media came out, social media helps people with props like, OK, now if I sit there and just me mug in my pictures, you know, like, you know, that's not going to be very attractive to, you know, to women if I'm trying to attract women. But if you see me in a picture with me and my dog and I'm just loving my dog and you instantly think I'm just this loving guy just based on that picture just based on that picture nothing else and that's how narcissists they prop themselves up they'll have you thinking they're this real animal lover and they love their children they're just this great family person and they're this and they're that. and they are totally the contrary and for you guys that know what I'm talking about, you're the ones I'm talking to. Hopefully you're not at a stage where you're married to one or anything like that. Because, again, with a covert narcissist, man, I talked to, I had a conversation with a woman. She told me she had been divorced for three years from her narcissist. Three years and still going back and forth to court with them. Three years divorced. They don't go away. They don't go away. You know, you got to force them away. You have to go to court with them to keep them away from you. Literally. You do. I mean, it is sickening. These people have no limits, no lines that they won't cross. They, there's no line that a malignant narcissist won't cross. Anything that they think is a boundary for you that you've put up, they will cross it. They will with and cross it with vengeance. You know, they don't have any problem just behind closed doors. They go all out to assert themselves to let you know that they'll do anything to you. They'll do anything to you. They will call you out your name. It will. I mean, you could sit there and be having a disagreement with the person. And the next thing you know, you have in the argument like like somebody just slapped your mama or something. And y'all about to fight. You know, over who has the remote control. These people have no bottom. There is no line that they will not cross. They, and they are the biggest hypocrites you're ever going to meet. They are the biggest hypocrites you're ever going to meet. You know, they hold you to a standard that they will never follow for themselves. They never will allow you to put them in that position. And they'll do. They're so bold about it. 
they will hold, try to hold you accountable for something that they just did. So what? I didn't put my food up, my plate in the kitchen. How you going to sit there with your plate all over there? I'm telling you, that's the malignant narcissist people that they they have this distorted sense of reality that just makes them feel entitled to do and say anything. And they really feel like it, it's not them. It, no, no, I don't. I, I didn't do that. You ask them. I didn't say that. I didn't. Who told you that? When did I say that? And they are convinced that they did. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still just kind of getting over my cold. But man, these people, I mean, they don't have a sense of respect for the law. They don't care about the law. They could care less. They are only concerned that you respect the law. That's their concern, that you respect the law and that you are held accountable to law. But they don't feel that they are governed or restricted by laws and government and police or anything like that. No, no, no. And they will disrespect you on a level to show you that they don't care about the law, nor the police or the courts. And that's why people who have divorced them. Ask somebody that's been divorced. from I was divorced from one and I'm still going through the court case myself. It's, it's nonstop with them people it's non-stop but you know that's just their sense of entitlement that's their sense of entitlement you know they have this anger this rage that is always on deck you know i mean they start fights and then play victim they'll come in there and start something and then act like you, when you get angry and respond, now you're the bad person. They run that mind game on you to the point where you start feeling like you crazy for real, like you're a schizophrenic. And if you're around one of them long enough, you're going to have symptoms of uh, memory loss. You're definitely going to have that because it's somebody playing with your mind and they're just jumping rope with it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Tell a lie, get you going, get it started, get the fight started, then play victim. Hey, what happened? Why are you treat me like this? And they're serious about it. A covert narcissist. <clears throat> I, I know of one specific case where a woman called the police on her husband. Locked herself in the bathroom in their house, <clears throat> called the police, scratched her face up. I, I'm I, you cannot make this stuff up. Scratched her face up, called the police from in the bathroom. Police got there. The, the guy comes down, you know, to, to, to the door to see what's going on. The police answered the door and he's like, what's going on? Who called y'all? And then, you know, he says his wife walks out of the bathroom. Pointing their finger at him, talking about he did this to me. These are people that will do anything. Anything. You know, triangulation. You have friends. Don't bring your friends around them. Don't bring your friends around a covert narcissist. If you know that they're covert narcissists from the beginning, don't bring friends around them. Because they're going to flirt with and they will... They will proposition your friends. They hump around in your circle. They do. They hump around in the circle. Absolutely. They are the kings, queens of mischief. Okay. The absolute king and queen. You know, and another thing that they do. See, a narcissist is somebody who studies you anyway, but. This, the covert narcissist, they, this is the person who's going to put tape recorders in your car, in your room. They're going to, you know, tap your phone, put apps on your phone, all kinds of stuff. And they're going to do it, not 
because you you know you don't come home at night and you have all these women and stuff like that calling you. No, it's nothing like that. See, that's how that's another one of the ways they make you believe that it's you, and it subconsciously makes you think that they're not cheating because they're so heavily watching you all the time. You're thinking, how do you have time to cheat? Well, what you don't know is that's one of their dirty little secrets. That's how they absolutely cheat on you because they're just watching your habits. They're watching, they're listening to your conversations. They're, they know where you are at all times. See, that covert narcissist, you're, you're not going to be able to sneak up on them. Not very often. They're going to know exactly where you are and they're going to know at all times where you are because you're not going to run up on them. You're not going to catch them doing to you <clears throat> what they act like you're doing to them. Mm -mm. No. So you don't be surprised about, you know, the uh, them tracking you, you know. Tracking your time, everything, you know, don't get surprised about stuff like that, you know, and also <clears throat> they're going to isolate you. I want to talk to you guys real quick about that, that isolation. You know, one of the ways that they isolate you from family and friends is see when you meet their family and friends and you can talk to somebody and you can have like a side conversation with the person and really go into depth about like work or a hobby that you may have in common, golf, fishing for fellas. I know for me, I like boxing, you know, and I'm just one of those people. We're going to talk. If I meet, you know, meet people, I'm going to get to know you a little bit. So a, a narcissist, they're not going to do that. They're just very superficial. They're on the surface. But this is the way they confuse you and make you think, <clears throat> excuse me, they make you think that they are actually happy meeting your people and they're trying to be friendly with your family and your friends. So what they'll do is they'll, Hey, how you doing? I'm such and such. Hey, you know, I'm uh, such and such so and so. How you doing? Nice to meet you. You have a lovely home and they are basically going to keep it right there. The rest, if they have a, a, a further, further the conversation, they're going to keep it on the surface. That's it. And that's how you know they're isolating you because every conversation, they're not going to have a, a, a good friend in your family. They don't want your family and your good friends really to come around you very often because they're going to be the first people that notice the abuse because they are going to abuse you, but they need to isolate you first. They got to pull you somewhere where they can do their work on you and break you down. So you're not this glowing, happy person that you were when they met you. You know, so they got to be able to do that and they got to do it out, out of sight. Out, out, they don't want people to know, you know, that monster that, you know, you introduced them to. They don't want people to know that. And they know that if they really start talking and getting to too much depth of a conversation, then the real them is going to start coming out anyway. And people are going to know. So, again, that's just one of the ways you're going to know, oh, that's what we're dealing with. Oh, OK, cool. I got you. You know, um, these malignant types, you know, again, you know, it's this is the one. This is the person that your ladies is the one. This is the guy that your father warned you about. He just told you about this bad guy. I want you to look out for this, this, this and this. He didn't tell you to, <laughs> back then they probably didn't name him a narcissist. You know, they probably named something else. But, or they didn't have a name. That's all it was. They didn't have a name. Now we have a name for them. <clears throat> this is the, the lady, brothers, this is the female that mama was telling you about. Stay away from her. It's the narcissist. That malignant narcissist. And I mean, these people, man, they just... They are some foul people and they foul on purpose. They know they're foul. You know, they I mean, they're just they're, the condition. If you ever could see one of those people by themselves when they're in the home alone. Man, if you if, if you just had a chance to study and see what they're really like, if you could see what they're like behind closed doors. 
man, it, it, it would have literally it would amaze you. They spent so much time in darkness. I mean, alone in darkness. I mean, they are wicked. They are wicked. They are scary wicked. I mean, just wicked. And, you know, like the flying monkeys that, you know, we, I call them the flying flunkies. You know, it's the, it's the flunky. They, they keep themselves in an arena with people that really don't challenge them. They stay, they're going to be friends with people that they don't feel are on their level. You know, like you may introduce them to a friend, a good friend of yours, and that friend might have a spouse or significant other that you feel like they are on the same mental level. But when you bring them together, you're like, wow, I thought you guys would have hit it off. But if that person is a self-confident person who's not on the bandwagon, it's just going to be that. It's just going to be, you know, we cool, but, you know, it's going to be on the surface because a narcissist, they're going to surround themselves with people that are on team narcissism. OK, team. If you're not on team narcissism, they, you know, they ain't got a whole lot to say to you. You know, you're not their friend. You're not their pick, their choice. They want to stay in a group of people that are all about the narcissist, all about, you know, making their pedestal bigger, bolder, you know, higher, raising them, making them feel better, giving them endless supply. That's what a narcissist is about. Never about, you know, sharing that space. Who wants to? They don't want to share their crown. You know, narcissist feels like he's the king. I'm the man, you know, or I'm the queen, you know, I'm the queen bee, you know. Mm, excuse me. <clears throat> so, you know, if you found yourself in one of these, <laughs> if you found one of these things. Man, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm laughing about it, but I mean, it's not a laughing matter. You got to get away from that. No, you cannot stay with it. If you're married to it, man, get yourself together and get out of it because you're being tortured. You're being you're being tortured regularly. You're in a relationship that has far more downtime, bad time than good time. You're in a relationship that is the intimacy is is nothing. And, and, and this is another thing, like the triangulation with one of them, you know, not only are they going to are they going to shop for other supplies in your circle. But the intimacy that started so passionate and so loving and this and that, <clears throat> you're going to notice how that falls off. You know, because, see, there's power in intimacy. And that malignant narcissist, see, they look at love and feelings as a weakness. And I say that because they, that's how they look at you. They look at you as being weak for being so in love with them. And the way that they keep themselves from having those same feelings for you is they have to pull back when it comes to the intimacy. And see, that's what you're chasing the entire time in the relationship. You're chasing that intimacy. Well, the narc, as you go along, the narc is pulling that intimacy back. You know, the thing, the beautiful things they used to say, the way they used to, you know, rub your hair and your shoulders and kiss you, even the kissing, you know, the passionate tongue kisses. Got to pull back with that, you know, got to slow that down, got to stop it. Because. They don't want to feel they don't want to be in love with you the way they see that you're in love with them because then they can't torture you when they start to torture you. They need to not have any. They, you need to be the person they hate at that point, because that's how and see with, with a with a narcissist. See, there's no middle ground with them. Either they love you or they hate you. Now, I said love and I should have used a different term. <laughs> And I'm going to change that. Either you're a great person to them or you are a sack of dog crap to them. 
And I took the love back because they don't love. They they love, but not in the sense that you and I do. Not in a sense in a way that the empath does. They love, but they love what you do for them. They love things, you know, and they see you as a thing, as a possession, you know, and they put they feel like they own you. They feel like you're a possession of theirs, not like you're a human being, but like, you know, um, like you're their watch. You're their designer watch and you're there to make them look good. Like, yeah, look at my role, you know. Yeah, that's the relationship. That's how they look at you, you know. Not as, no, this is my better half. This is my other half. I am madly in love with this person. This person loves me. We're everything together. That's not how they look at you. And that's not what they see. You know, not in a relationship form. They don't get that out of relationships, you know, or they would be stick with one relationship. You know, trust and believe a malignant narcissist, man, they have a path of destruction. They're not just destructive with you. They are destructive. If you've done any homework, if they've told you about past relationships, I'm going to say this. If they are still friends with uh, exes, they still having sex with them. They still got things going on with them. But they're not true friends to anybody. Nobody. It's not what they do. But you know, they're going to triangulate you. They're going to always have other supply. They're going to always have other people. You know, that's just something that they do. You know, if you're looking for a monogamous, a monogamous relationship. You can't have that with one of not a not a malignant narcissist. No, you can't have that with them. That just doesn't apply in that they don't even have a box. You can check for check for that with one of them, you know, with one of them. Everything is going to be off the chain. It's going to be off the hook crazy. It's going to be a, a situation so crazy that people are not even going to believe you when you start telling them the story. And most people can't even tell their story because it's so freaking crazy and mind boggling. You can't even tell your story because you like people are going to think I'm crazy if I told this story. But we're starting to let it out, people. We're starting to let it out. You know, just day by day, you know, and which and, and I'm just I'm back and I'm in this game because I want to help. I want to bring awareness to it, you know, and I do want to before I let this video end. I want to bring you guys to a place where if you're dealing with that malignant narcissist, a, a place I want to I want you to get to a place of healing. And the place of healing, man, is away as far away from that narcissist as you can get. That's where the healing begins. It begins when you start to develop that mindset toward, you know, healing. And if you're watching this video, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to heal. You know, you've gone through a lot. If you're dealing with a narcissist, I know you're going through a lot. <laughs> Every day you're going through something. That's the person that you just, no matter what, it's always something. It's always something. And what you don't see that. It's always something because with a narcissist, man, they get awful. They, they hate it when they wake up in the morning and you just woke up and you feeling good. Well, they hate that because they don't wake up feeling good. They don't. They wake up empty every day. They wake up, I mean, tortured every day. And they're tortured because they're narcissists. They're narcissists, man. They are empty. They are dead inside. That is a black hole you're sitting there with. You know, that person mirrored you, made you think that they are this loving, kind hearted, cool, great person. And they are not. They are not that. They are your worst nightmare. Get away from that. Get away from them. Continue to watch the videos. Check out my videos. Check out everybody on YouTube. You know, because that's the self-help place now. Or get yourself in a, a, a self-help group. Get in a group on Facebook. You know, I'm developing my group on Facebook now to help people who want to talk. And I'm setting it up so that we can do group sessions. And everybody doesn't want everybody in their business. So I'm trying to set my page up now to in a way where you can talk about your story and talk about your issue without people knowing who you are. 
You know, when you just want to talk, you just want to vent and let it out. And I'm going to give you guys some updates on that. You know, right now, I want you to like, subscribe, share and comment on this. I want to send a shout out to Ireland. Thank you. A at that you guys made my day. You know, you watching my videos around the world. Hey, that makes me feel incredible. That is an incredible feeling. It it truly is an incredible feeling. Um, yeah, guys, I want you to go on my page, like, uh, subscribe. You know, uh, it's a new page, so I'm just getting my subscribers up. I'm really low on the totem pole when it comes to that. Um, but it's a it's a process, you know. So go on there, like me, subscribe to me. I'll have some PayPal information. Now, people actually asking me about, you know, making donations. I was like, wow. You know, but I realized, you know, people want help. And this is one of the tools that they use to help. And I know it helped me. And that's what that's the reason that I'm here. I'm here because this community opened up for me. And now I'm back. I'm here to help you and everyone that I can. That's what this is about. This is about self-help. It's about building your self-esteem back up, building your boundaries back up. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do another video and I, I'm going to try to do one next week on building those boundaries of how to get that narc to leave you alone. All right. So I'm out. Thank you.